what was the decision to join Rangers? Well, I'd, I'd spoken to Daishi at the end of the season and, and at that point I'd had lots of seasons where I'd been in the Premier League and it was just about staying in the league and finishing 16 for winning 10 games and drawing. And I just thought, I've, I've got a little bit of a taste at Newcastle, at Marseille and QPR and now Burnley of winning and getting promoted. And Rangers made this massive play at me first year back in Scottish Prem. You know, the fellow who'd signed me at Burnley, Frank McPartland, had left halfway through the season to go and work with Mark Warburton at Rangers. And I just felt for it. Do you know what? I had Celtic kits as a kid, but I'd, I'd love to play for Real Madrid or Barcelona. I'd love to play for Dortmund or Bayern Munich. I'd love to play for Porto, Benfica or Sport and Lisbon. So for me, to play for Rangers or Celtic as an anorak of football, even though... As a kid, I, I, I'm a Roman Catholic, Joseph Anthony, you know, went to St. Agnes School and St. Thomas of Becky. You were all, every third kit I got was a Celtic kit. I always got Celtic's third kit at like Easter. You always ended up with a Celtic kit and they were always decent kits. Umbro, you know, Peoples, Ford and, um, you know, some of my mates ended up on Rangers kits, but we were always Celtic kits. So then I'd always thought I'd have played, I always thought I wouldn't mind having a go at Scottish footy playing for either Rangers or Celtic, but I always thought I'd play for Celtic. And then, you know, as life comes at you, you know, win the league at Burnley, thinking I'm going to sign a new deal there. And then I love Daishi, and uh, I think I can speak about this now, but it's like it's Daishi's money that he spends, you know what I mean? And that's a good thing for a manager, but I knew what it cost to replace me. I'd done the math on it at that point. I'm 31. I've just come off probably, you know, the most consistent season I've had, team of the year. We've won the league. I think, you know, it was a productive environment for me. I had a good working relationship with the manager. It was it was just what I needed. I was settled. I was living back in the Northwest. Kids, family's great. And I spoke to him and he said, at the end of the season, we'd had a pint together and, and a curry. And he said, listen, I, he started talking money and I don't like to talk money. I just said, look, just just when you speak to me agent, you, you, you just sort it out. You know, you know, I don't really want to get involved in the nitty gritty. You pay me what you think's fair and, and I'll sign for it. So I go away thinking that's going to get done. And, and in the midst of the next two weeks, th there's again another Mexican standoff to disagreeing on figures. And and then cleverly, Frank and Rangers stick the little wedge in there and go, come up, come up and look at this. So I go up to Glasgow. It's June. They fucking take me to Loch Lomond. Andy Black takes me to Loch Lomond. The sun's cracking the flags. Take me to Ibrox, show me the trophy room, the pitch. I'm, take me to the training ground. I'm going what a fucking club this is. Now, Burnley was a good club at the time, but it wasn't Glasgow Rangers, you know, the the impressive, you know, institution of football, that is Rangers, and that is Celtic as well, you know, I know, I know your league's uh, different to ours, but still incredible respect from, from the football fraternity. And, and then, I just thought, you know what, I fucking really fancy this. I, lo I love me golf, and I thought, and they were saying, it's like this every day, take no notice of the weather forecast, the fucking sun, there wasn't a cloud in the sky, they're like, it's like Lying this every bastards. day. <laughs> so, I know, yeah. But I thought, do you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a chance, it's history for Rangers, it's the first season back after the, 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 the problems they had. Um, even if you're shit in Scotland and you're Rangers, you're second or third, so you're going to be competing for trophies, chance of playing European football, which it was going to be difficult for me to do in England with Burnley, who were newly promoted back to the league. And Burnley hadn't, in the negotiation, really shown me as much love as I thought it was going to be shown. So th there was a crack and Rangers stepped in it. And then I, I, I decided that, that that was my challenge. I weighed it up and everyone was going, you're fucking mad, giving up the Prem to go here. And I thought, you know what, this is a ballsy challenge. Like to, to overthrow Celtic and be the first Rangers side back in the top flight and, and, and winning a title. It's, it's a historic moment and... I thought it'd be great to be a part of, like it's a real underdog story. Um, so I've, I've, I've decided I'm going to do that. In the midst of that, Daishi gets wind of it. And because he's slightly different motivation to me, he's a little bit more more orientated. He's then come over the top of it with a big an offer from Burnley, thinking ah, that's the end of the Rangers one. And he expected that to be a, a torpedo into the Rangers uh, transfer. And I'm like, no, no, I've, I've decided to go to Burnley, uh, to go to Rangers. He's like, what do you mean? We're offering you more money. I'm like, I, I don't do this for money. Like, yeah, I made one decision for money to go from Newcastle to QPR and I swore for the rest of my existence that would be the last time I was ever um, ever compromised by uh, financial uh, compensation. And he couldn't believe it. But mine and his relationship got stronger since 
because he presumed, like everybody or normal people are, that if someone offers you 10 grand a week more or 8 grand a week more, you're fucking st- in, in, in the Premier League, you're going to stay there. But I was like, no, no, I, I would have stayed for for that offer at the first goal. But now you, you've only offered that because a big club's come and my my eyelids have been turned and I really fancy this project. And, um, you know, it was a big moment for me because my little boy Cassius, he's 11 now, but he was starting school. So it was his first school. So we, he started school in, in Bears Den in Scotland and had like a little bit of a Glaswegian mm-hmm. accent going on. So it's not just... Uh, may you can pick up the languages really easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the genetics. So same you saying, obviously you cause fucking, everywhere you go, you always cause headlines, but you went, oh, Farmers League, Scott Brown, shite, you can't lace my boots. What was that then, getting into the Parkhead game? So so I never I never actually said that. When I went up there, obviously Rangers had been demoted to the to the bottom rung of professional, was it league? Did they go to the third oh, division? Third league, man. So I remember Ali McCoyston and all that were there and they were really down in the doldrums. And as I say, I grew up watching, you know, more Celtic than Rangers. I was, you know, if, if, if Celtic played Rangers, I, w- I wanted the Celtic to win. You know, I didn't really invest mm-hmm. in it because I'm an Evertonian, but I would always, um, you know, out of the two, you know, AC Milan played Inter Milan. I always liked Inter Milan. Real Madrid, Barcelona. I always liked Barcelona. Um, so I, I get a chance to go up there. Obviously, Rangers' first season back in the top flight and they'd lost in the Scottish Cup final to Hibs, but beating Celtic in the semi-final, if you remember. So Ronnie Dahlia was the manager of Celtic and obviously Celtic were in were winning the league and the trophies, but they weren't in a great cycle. Um, so when I go to Rangers, first year back for Rangers in the top flight and coincides with Brendan Rodgers taking the job. So in the midst of doing the press, I've just won the league in England in the championship. I've had the, the most consistent season I've had in terms of behaviour and process. I had Blackie in my life now, and Daishi was good influence and good group in the in the dressing room, team of the year. And I'm going up to Scotland. I'm like, I, I'm going to fucking show these cunts. Like, I, I'm, mainly, I'm going to build Rangers. You know, I'm going to. And at the time, you can't go into Rangers who were who were first year in the thing. You always the marquee signing and go oh, and Celtic great isn't Scott Gow, Brown great. So I'm like, in Scotland, Rangers are doing well and Celtic are shit, or Celtic are doing well and Rangers are shit. The two can't cohabituate and, and both can't be doing well at the same time. It's just the country's just not geared on that. One's great and one's shite, and vice versa. In England, there's about nine teams that shared amongst. But in Scotland, the real focus is on the old firm. You know, Hibs, Hearts, Aberdeen, etc. But Celtic and Rangers caught most of it. So if I turn up and I'm saying, I'm just here to, oh, I, you know, I just go under the radar. And and that's not me as a personality. And I'm also like, you know, with the greatest respect to Scott, and I've managed against him. You know, he took the job uh, Fleetwood that I've been there. And, you know, in terms of if, if you're an elite level player in Scotland, you have to come south. To it, prove you're worth. Barry Ferguson, you know, Graeme Souness. I could keep going back. You, you, no leash. matter what. It's the same way the Welsh, they can't stay and play in the Welsh Premier League. You can't. The yeah, Irish can't stay and play in for Shamrock Rovers. Northern Irish can't stay and play for Linfield. You've got to come here. The same way in the 80s, our players had to go to Italy or to Spain or to Germany because they weren't seen as the the, 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 the hardest challenge. You know, if you want to be a tough fighter now, you've got to go to UFC. Bellator, Cage Warriors, one championship, etc. But you want to be the fucking top man and remembered forever. The UFC is where you need to be at. And for me, the Premier League in my era of football is where you need to be at. So if you're anyone who fucking anyone and you think you can mix it with the big boys and you see Patrick Vieira and Roy Keane and Paul Scholes and Machalele and Lampard, Gerrard and all these, that's just a name but a few. And you sit and look in the window at that, knowing you could be in that room, then for me, you're a shit bag, like you're a shite bag. Now, Barry Ferguson, to be fair to him, was the king of Scotland. Barry was the king of Scotland. King of Rangers, that's his club, captain. And to be fair to him, he had the bollocks to come down. He didn't move to Man United or Liverpool or one of those clubs that maybe his ability was befitting of. He had to go and sign for Blackburn Rovers. Then he went to Birmingham City. And I think he won a League Cup. And I think he went back north of the border, maybe not being as good as what he thought he was going to be down here. You know, kind of Graham Sooners category. But I think he certainly went back up there and thought, you know what, I've had a fucking right go. Captain Rangers, I've won everything I can win at my boy club and I've gone down south of the border and had a right go. And I don't know. I just look at them lads like a Scott. And I've had a pint with Scott, as I say. You know, we've laughed about what went on in Scotland and he's a good fella. He's not a bad fella. A great saving for Celtic Football Club. And I always said to him, like, 
I just, I had no respect for you. If you just fight Bellator and you don't come to UFC, I think you're a fanny. Why not come to <laughs> fucking UFC? You know what I mean? That's fair enough. Logic, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? so, so that was my mindset. And, yeah. and then when I turn up there, I'm like, I'm not coming here to take part. I'm coming here for, to win the title. Brendan's gone in and... He smashed that, to be fair. I think Brendan's a chameleon. So Brendan is brilliant, but there's a sell-by date on him. And, you know, oh, I, yeah. I don't he, want to say badly yeah, on no, him. But he but says he he's going to be here for another three years. But if he gets an offer for free, fucking... Um, Saudi Arabia he'd be off in a heartbeat but again you know they went up there and Celtic and to be fair to them Brownie and uh, I think they had some good lads there and young, young Callum McGregor who I think is a good player yeah, he's a good captain uh, the boy who went to Arsenal Tierney you know the, the, Roger they had a good little and Brendan going in I think because of what had happened with Ronnie Dahlia I think Brendan going in had got Celtic standards raised massively so we were going in Rangers with a, a championship in Scotland team that thought it was better because it beaten Celtic in the semi-final but it was the, probably a bad version of Celtic under Ronnie Dahlia Brendan had come in and standards had gone north and to be fair to him did he win treble treble or something yeah, three trebles. he absolutely smashed its head in and I think the likes of Scott and all that maybe their career and, uh, and time at Celtic was not as professional as what it could have been under Ronnie Dahlia and I think me signing for Rangers and coinciding with Brendan coming in, I think it put a few of them lads on notice. And to be fair to Celtic, they, they got some good players in there and and made the players they already had better. And they, you know Brendan's uh, coaching quality, they never fucking looked back, did they? What was the old fun game like for you? The, the uh, atmosphere. Do you, do you know? Do you know it, was a, it was a strange one in terms of I, I'd been moaning at stuff in house, and you know we've had my time Straight again. Straight away. I, yeah, because standards were just poor. Like now, I went up and I was. I was a little bit behind in terms of my own fitness, so you're a bit frustrated with yourself when you when you when you're looking for your own fitness. And because I'd had such a good season and I barely by the end everyone listened to me. If I said it was something, they'd go fucking hell, he's moaning, but he's usually right. And I went up to Rangers and I had no credibility in the dressing room. Why? And, and I just because I'd not done anything at Rangers and I just start fucking moaning at them. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, and you've yeah. got your Tavernias and Lee Wallace and new lads who've been there, settled for a bit, and I'm just turning up going. We don't do that, that shit, don't do that, that's not going to work. But I'm saying that because that's not going to work in the Premier League. That doesn't mean to say it won't work against fucking Dundee or Dundee United, it probably does. And if you're Rangers, you get away with bad habits until you face Celtic or until you face a decent side in, in European competition. So when I get up there, I'm criticising everything straight away out the gate going, that's not good enough, this not good enough. But, so instantly, you don't, you, get people's, you don't get people's support because you're just criticising everything, whether it's just or not. You're just seen as a fucking moaning cunt. So I actually got off on the wrong foot because I was moaning at people and, and I made a huge mistake there. A uh, valuable life lesson. We then get into the nitty gritty of it and all the stuff that I was moaning about not being at the correct intensity and not being the correct way, you know, the way we defended set plays, the way we trained, etc. Didn't really rear their head because you're beating Dundee and you're drawing with some, you know, you're not getting beat. But the seventh or eighth game, we were playing Celtic at Celtic Park. So... I've been moaning and moaning and moaning in the background anyway. We get to Celtic Park and I've been there kind of two months now, two two and a bit months, and I just was like, what the fuck have I done signing here? These are fucking miles away, like they're just miles away and I can't change them all. And I'm moaning, I'm getting more and more frustrated, which is making me even more of a moaning cunt and it's alienating me further and further from the lads who I need to affect. So we play in the old firm and... We've done the team shape on uh, Friday. I think it's a Sunday 12.30 kickoff. So the Friday we do the team shape and me and Andy Halliday are playing centre mid and I think Nico Crankyar's in the 10 and it's 4-5-1 and, you know, it's a little bit more of a defensive structure and we've got our plan and, and that's the manager's uh, prerogative. And, you know, then we get to the hotel. We think we're staying in Mar Hall on, on the Saturday for the game. And I always remember this, uh, James, because I was sitting with... Uh, Lee Wallace, Kenny Miller, Andy Alliday, you were all like mad Rangers, They're just boss lads, good lads, love football. So I used to just take it, you know, I, I find it, like when I was saying to you about the air and makeup, I find it funny just to wind people up, you know, just say mad things and then not say anything so they don't actually know what, where they, so I'd say like, I'd just, just to noise the lads up, just for the conversation at the table, I'd say, who do you think the best player in the world is? And they'd go, you know, fucking Ronaldo or Messi or, and I'd go, and they'd all give the names and then they'd go in the end they'd go who do you think it is and I'd go like Thomas Muller and they'd go what I'd go fucking Thomas Muller most goals of the World Cup and I'd just just so pissed and they'd all be arguing what are you for? I'd go well better than Messi just and I didn't believe it 
but it was just to fucking noise them up, just so they're all taking the bait on it. So I always remember being in the hotel, and I always remember winding Kenny Miller up that night about saying Thomas Muller's the best player in the world. He scored the most goals at the World Cup, was my logic. He's got the, you know, he's, he's more than... Um, um, I was, uh, And the other argument was making was Marislav closest, better than like somebody else because he scored more World Cup goals. Anyway, the Scottish lads in there, Kenny Miller and that, they're absolutely losing the shit. And then from nowhere, Andy Halliday's been part of it and he just goes quiet. So we're all sitting at the table, he just goes quiet and then gets off. Like, then he comes back and you can see he's fucking like upset. And he's, he's a proper staunch kid, and he's a good kid. So I'm like, fucking, you're thinking someone in the family, or, you know, somebody's had some bad news. So he's like, then, then it gets out that the manager's changed the team, but he's text Andy to tell him he's not in the team for the old firm Saturday mo or Sunday morning. So I'm, he's never done this. So I'm like, what? What the fuck's this? We're playing the biggest game of the season. He's done the team work and he's fucking shit himself and changed the team Saturday night and he hasn't had the bollocks to pull the kid one-on-one. -on -one. He's texted him and he's gone and he's a mad Rangers fan, mad Rangers family. But that's upset the other lads who were quite close to him. So I'm like, fucking hell. Anyway, sleep it off, get up the next day. Warburton's like the leader and he's not the leader. Like I'm like, he's just, his ass is gone. So I'm, I think he's a jag anyway, based on his training sessions and what's been done. But I've had to sit on it because I'm thinking, I, none of the, I, I just keep moaning at everything. Everyone thinks I'm a cunt. Like, I, I'm just literally moaning at everything. So I'm like Victor Meldrew and I'm thinking, like, just... But I'm, I'm thinking a few things need to go wrong here before they finally go, listen, you were right there, can you fix it? And I'd have gone, yeah, happily. I was, you know, you almost have to... It's like watching your kids fuck stuff up before you fix it. You almost have to allow it to unfold. And in football terms, I'm watching this unfold. I'm going, this is just heading for... Like, I've not learned the lessons from the Scottish Cup final. I'd identified by the games I'd watched that they had a weakness for conceding goals from set plays. They'd, they'd conceded two in the Scottish Cup final against Hibs, lost the game on it. And he had, I think, 14 or 16 f instances in, in, in the games that I'd watched where set plays were a huge problem. So I'm getting him thinking, right, first port's call. Set plays are dead easy. It's a set piece. You just get organised from, from the start. Um, don't, we don't do that here. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, we, we don't do set plays here. We don't practice set plays. And I'm like, well, you fucking shit at them. You lost a Scottish Cup final on them. Why? Yeah, we don't do that here. That's not, that's not what we do. So that's not a good enough answer for me because I'm going, well, I've worked for bum, bum, bum in the Premier League for the last fucking 12 years. I've been on the continent and this must, this must be this mad football club where you're the only football club that doesn't have to fucking practice set plays. And lo and behold, you're absolutely useless at defending them. Can you not understand the correlation? Like sometimes in football, they forget that rep it's a repetition sport. If you keep repeating your action with personal mm -hmm. practice, you improve and get better at it. From a team perspective, the more you drill stuff, the, 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 the better you get at it. But Mark Warburton, who is Rangers manager at the time, managed Brentford. But whilst I was playing in the Premier League and becoming a footballer and experience in the arena and the, and the challenge of that, he was working as a banker in the city. So... You know, I give I give everyone the respect of the due, but it, for me, I live a life of meritocracy. If you act like a cunt, I treat you um, bespokely towards that. Now, if you act really um, competently and you show your worth on a daily basis, then I treat you exactly... A, life isn't... You just treat everyone great. That's It's not possible. You treat people how, how, how they treat you or, or how they interact with the world. And if I see someone grafting and putting the work in, I go above and beyond to help them. If I see someone slacking or fucking not doing the work, I'll either ignore them or give them a kick yeah. up the ass. That's that's the nature. Yeah. So Rangers then, you've ended up leaving then. What happened with the gambling? Was that, was that Rangers, wasn't it? So it, it's, it's an interesting one, this. And I've not, I don't think I've said this publicly. So the Rangers one for me was, as I say, I've been saying stuff that was going to go wrong. Team changes. I'm in the dressing room at Celtic Park and, you know, you walk the gauntlet out the stadium like, like first old for him and it's hostile. It's, you know, at this time there was still, I think we had, 1,500, 2,000 fans in it. Now they've, they've closed the away yeah, fans 600. off, which is shite, yeah. stupid. Well, None, no fans now, well, yeah. Well, at, the, at this point, there was still a bit of a crowd mm -hmm. in. So we're at Celtic Park and um, I remember doing a warm-up and that and I said to you, I knew I was ready. Well, I'll just go back to my debut and I told you the team's name. I turned to Fowler. I'm, I'm, is that my name? I go out for the warm-up. My arse has gone. The hero and the coward. I'm shitting myself. Do the warm up. I'm all over the gaff in the warm up. It's not, you know, your touch is not quite right. Everything you're doing, you're getting away with it, but like, you know, you're just not in sync. This is at, uh, the Reebok for my debut, and I, I go up the tunnel, and my ass is still going like I have fucking butterflies and that. 
can I swim here? Like, this is the fucking, this is sink or swim. This is match of the day tonight. This is goals on Sunday in the morning. This is all the papers. This isn't like the reserves are high. Like, this is the fucking real deal here. Like, this is everything you've worked for and you're only going to get the one chance, me half fella ringing around my head. And I remember going up the tunnel after the warm-up, nervous, and I remember sitting in the dressing room and I just remember thinking, you've worked your cock, your cock off to be here. Everyone who's sacrificed for you to be here, You've done the training, you haven't cut a corner, you haven't fucking large that you haven't been in the nightclubs. If you're ever, ever gonna be prepared for this, you're prepared. So just fucking trust yourself when you get out there. And a calmness just descended on me in the tunnel. This is five to ten to three. I just remember looking around and going, fucking there's Robbie Fowler who grew up watching this, Steve Mac. Like, just remember this calmness. And I remember going out in the tunnel and just being cold, like cold clinical. And I speak to people about it and I'm like, that's the moment you know whether you're fucking built for the fucking proper stuff or not. Like when you know, when the chaos is there and you're, you're going cooler, calmer, more calculated, people usually speed up in that or, and I just remember the, the, the feeling no one could ever pay me for. Like I'm a 20 year old boy who doesn't know what's about to come, who's, who's work for this moment. And just the calmness of knowing I've done the work, I'm as... I'm as capable of being here as everybody because I've paid me dues, I've paid the rent and I can't wait to get out here and perform. And as I say, I went into the first team there and I never came out, I, ne I never came out. I stayed in there till uh, the Celtic um, the Celtic mob grasped me up with the betting account, which was Paddy Power um, in Scotland. And then obviously got a one game ban in Scotland, 18 month ban in England, reduced to nine. So, so how that played out was and I'll come back now, dressing rooms. So I'm crystal clear, calm, making my debut in the Premier League at 20. When I'm in the dressing room at Celtic Park for the old firm, looking around me thinking, standards, you know, not where they need to be. Watching Mark Warburton, I'm, I, I'm an observer, like I speak a lot, but I also watch a lot. I don't miss much of it. I have an illness that I fucking spot everything. Do you know what I mean? When you see someone acting a cunt in school and, and before you know it, three weeks later, he's, he's someone trying his hand. i seen it three weeks before and I'm like, I should have nipped that in the bud there. I've always had this incredible ability to predict the future because I'm very observant. Um, so, sitting watching, feel frustrated at Rangers, but I think I can change it. I'd almost left just before the deadline when they started to sign Lescott. I put my body in front of Lescott for the football club, mainly because I knew he weren't good enough. He'd grasped on me in the uh, FA thing and I knew a physio who'd had him at West Brom and I spoke to the physio and he said, his knees are dust, don't sign him. And I'd relayed this up the food chain and I said to Warburton, I'm not sharing the dressing room with him, so if you sign him, I'm off, dead straight forward, but let me know because he's a fucking grass and I don't play with grasses and he's a prick. So, and that was it. I'd probably get on with him fine now, but at that moment in time, that's where I was at with Jolien. Um, so Warburton, Goes, I'm not have a player dictating to me who I'm signing, I'm not signing. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, sign him, don't sign him. That's up to you. But if you sign him, I'm out. Dead straight forward. Now I've been up to Scotland. I'm going to be the best player in Scotland. I'm the marquee signing. So this was the 30th or 29th of uh, September. The deadline is 31st. In the midst of that, Sean Dice just phoned me and said, look, come back to Burnley. It's not working. Get yourself back down here. You're right back in. You shouldn't have gone like... Our relationship's grown stronger for the fact that I walked away and because mm. I walked away and never uh, took the financial, his respect for me, I think, grew because he thought, fucking hell, he's a man of principle. Him, like, fair enough, I'll have that. He hasn't, he hasn't signed for the money or been uh, thrown by the money. So he's phoning me saying, come back. You know, Warb he, He'd actually said to me, Warburton's not for you. He said, he, he, he's not your type of character. You don't, and he was right. He was right on that. And I thought that was because he selfishly wanted me to stay at Burnley, make his job easier, do you know what I mean? Um, and, and then I get up there and, as I say, I'm in the dressing room at Celtic Park. I've watched loads of things and he's walking around doing the team talk. I knew the thing that had gone on with Andy Halliday and he's in his suit and Rangers, you travel away in suits, shirt and tie and he's shaking like a shit and dog. His hand's shaking almost like he's got like Parkinson's or a, a motor neurons disease or something like He's fucking shaking. And I just remember fucking thinking, how am I going into battle for you, you cunt? You're a fucking fanny. Your ass has gone here. You fucking shit yourself on the team. Your fucking standards are shit and your ass has gone here. And I just remember thinking, I'm going to have to go out here and I'm getting my ass handed to me. I knew 
I'd said I'm going to be the best player in Scotland and now I'm getting, I'm just going to get covered in egg and if we get beat yet, I'm getting it and for being a braggish, um, a bragging English cunt coming north of the border saying you're going to be the fucking main man, this is, I'm getting me licks here and I'm going to have to take it like a man. So I've decided as we're going out, I thought it's going to be tough this game but I'm not going to get sent off. My standard's going to be sky high and win, lose or draw. Everyone on this pitch is going to, is going to know and respect me after the game. Because all he wanted, I think, was for me to do something mad and get sent off. That was the narrative. So it was like this tinderbox, this powder keg was building between me and Brownie. You know, the, the, the famous thing with the handshake and that. And I'd looked him in the eyes, but they'd waited until I'd, I'd moved past it and looked down. They were going, look, he hasn't even got the bollocks. Look him in the eye. Look, I'll level with you. If Scott wants to fucking walk in, and you can ask Scott himself, we had a bit of a laugh, as I said, in the dressing room. I think he's had a great career and he was a great player. There was no there was no me and Scott Brown. You know, Rangers and Celtic Football Club are bigger than Joey Barton and Scott Brown. This was Rangers and Celtic being back on the table, north of the border, which is, for me, the Scottish League for the first time. Because Rangers, I don't know what went on, but you you don't want... If, you, if you're Scottish football and you demote Rangers to the third division, you ruin your own product. They ruin the game in Scotland by doing that. You know, the football clubs cook the books. Of course they do. All our big clubs do here. Look at all the... Now, you need incredible lawyers to stop you, you know, as some of the big clubs in our country are fine. Now, if you've got the best lawyers, then you don't get any problems. Rangers at the time was a bit of a mess. And it should have been about Rangers and Celtic, but they wanted to make it about the protagonists in the middle of that, which was me and Scott Brown. Game gets played. We're right in the game. He's got the wrong team selection. We're right in the game. We end up losing. I think we're 2-1 down. Phil Sendros, who he, I don't think he should have played Phil. He wasn't fit enough and he dropped early for Phil. Phil Sendros gets sent off, jumps and missed times. Ed and balls it. We're down to 10 men and they score 3-1 not long afterwards. I end up playing middle centre-back of a back three with James Tavernier, right side centre-back and Lee Wallace, left side centre-back. Both can't defend for Toffee. Both fantastic going forward. Really good attack and full-backs, but fucking hell, the, the defensive... Uh, um, qualities that they severely lack and I'm definitely not a middle centre-back um, against Moussa Dembele so the game ends up finishing and we're right in the game at 2-1 at 3-1 they end up scoring a fourth and fifth quite late but that's our back three we, you know we're down to 10 and we lose 5-1 and and at the end of the game I walk around I thought no you fucking come up giving it the big and you have to fucking take your fucking licks as a, as a man I fucking clapped all the fans shook every one of the Celtic players hands told them well done looked every single one of them in the face especially Scott went fucking well done and I thought right that's ground zero now now the fucking work begins now the venture to put Rangers back on the top of Scottish footy begins you've had your come up and stay so the game finishes that's Sunday night all my mates are up for the old firm they're all wanting to go out in Glasgow on the Isle I'm like, I'm not going out anyway. I'm not showing my face in public. We be fucking five one. Fucking not going out. So they're all out and about. I fucked them all off. Monday we're off. Um, oh, sorry, M Monday we're back in training. So I'm thinking, right, we need to get in Monday because the job starts here. You know, that's the first game I've lost in Scotland. Only what lost one game in Scotland. That was it. All the other games I had won or, or, or drawn. I only played seven or eight. I think that was the eighth game. So come in on the on the Monday, thinking, all right, right, enough's gone wrong now. Now we can get cracking. Now the, we don't do that here. Excuses got to wash because we've conceded the goals from set plays in this game. So we'll come in Monday morning. Mark and Davey Weir were notorious for like every game you played, they'd have an hour, an hour and 15 minutes debriefing the game. Played fucking cow and beef in the cup or pizza head, an hour and 15 minutes, all the good and bad things that you've done. That was like, you know, that, that's their way of coaching. So we'll come in on the Monday morning thinking, right, we're going to get a nitty gritty. First defeat, but it's going to be blood blood, guts and fucking all the, all the gore. But we need it because if you want to overthrow Celtic, you know, that's the team you've got to beat. And we've just been fucking shellacked by them in the first encounter. That's the first game after the semi-final where they beat them, where they thought they had the number again. Brendan's in town, not Ronnie Dahlia. So we realise at this point, fucking hell, this is a different entity. This Celtic team is, is, is under a different steam. Come in on the Monday, no meeting. All right, so there's no meeting. Like, that's weird. That's the first time that's happened. So it's almost like the biggest, biggest defeat we've had. They just pretended that it hasn't happened. Get out to train. Andy Halliday's not happy that he has, has he's been left out of the team. He came on in the game, but he came on with like 20 minutes ago or something like that. So he's fuming. So training on the Monday morning, James, at Rangers Football Club was the best training I was ever involved in the morning after that old firm because people were fucking angry. Proud footballers were really angry about how their football team had performed and the scorn that comes on yeah, in that country if you lose an old firm. And training was a, 
the level I was used to in England because you'd have to train at or above match intensity. You can't train below it and expect to turn on on a match day. You might get away with that for a fucking two, three month period. But at the level we play at, you've got to be on it all the fucking time. So we play that game and um, get in the trainings right on the edge. It's like you've been involved in them sessions where there's a few t- tackles flying around, but it's fucking right on the edge where it's a good, hard session. Both teams are going at it. But like if the shit bags in the group are on notice going, fucking hell, this is one tackle away from a, f- a fisty cuffs. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was right on that edge where the best teams that best teams I'd trained in, the uh, best teams I played in and been involved in, knew and respected that little space. If it bubbles over it, a few years after pull that back in and get in the middle of it. If it goes under it, a few years after moan at each other or fucking kick off to get it back in that zone. But it was right in, it was, it was this Mark Warburton fucking academy fucking nonsense stuff that we've been doing, passing off mannequins, centre arse overlapping and putting crosses in fucking academy, you know, nonsense. Uh, now w- w- was hopefully going to be uh, gone with saying it properly. And the manager, Warburton, didn't like it and stops the session halfway through because me and Andy are having it. Andy's on the opposite team and he's pissed off he hasn't been in the team and I'm on the other team and we're going at it and there's a few players on our team who are getting dragged along in it but me and him are really going hell for leather and the manager's ass goes because he thinks it's going to kick off. Now me and Andy had a great working relationship and really respect him. I think he's a great kid. Cared a lot about the football club and I spent a bit of time with him away from the football arena because he's he's into his music and his fashion. He's a, he's a good lad. I've met him a few times in Dubai since with his missus. He's a cracker. So we're sound. We 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 know it's getting tasty, but it, there's no like it's not going to boil over. Manager stops the session and goes right, lads. We're going to do shooting on the edge of the box here. So goes down and I, I've gone here. I'm like, what the fuck's this nonsense? So now you've got Clint Hill taking a touch on the edge of the box and having a shot. Someone's fizzing it out to him. That's just nonsense. And I've just walked in. I just, I just, kept, I didn't even, I walked down to the session, what he was doing. And I just kept walking. I just went, this is a load of shit. This is a waste of my time. And just started walking in. And if you, if you, if you've been to the ground at Rangers, yeah. so the staff thing's on the second floor. So as I'm walking in, Frank McPartland, who's, who's signed me, is looking out the balcony. And I've just gone, this manager is a fucking clown. And I've just walked in, gone into the dressing room, started getting changed, and I'm about to just go home. So I'm getting changed. The lads have stayed out doing this shooting session. And fucking Davey Weir walks in after about 15 minutes and goes to me, um, manager wants to see you upstairs. So I'm like, why? He's gone uh, He's not happy the way you've uh, spoken and uh, the way you spoke to other players. And um, he, he wants an apology off you. Uh, he wants to see you upstairs in his office now. So I'm like, and I respect Davey because Davey played for Everton um, under Moyes, you know, so I respected Davey's career and he's a good fella, Davey. And I went, Davey, listen, I need to go home here. That, that's, it's not good for me to go upstairs because I, I think I'm going to fucking say what a, what a feel here. And he's gone, no, no, he, want, he wants to see you. I'm like, no problem. So at this point, like I've had enough. I'm, I'm checking out like, and it's I, I can't play for this cunt. Like, I can't play for this manager. It's, he's not for me. So, go upstairs, this is, as I say, the um, the Monday or the Tuesday after the thing, go upstairs and go in, he go. so it's me, Davey and, and Warb's in the office and he goes, yeah, sit down. So I'm sitting across the table, he goes, eh, I think you need to apologise to the players. So I'm like, what for? Uh, the way you spoke, the way you've spoken to people in recent weeks, the way you think, oh, it's, it's not acceptable. I said, well, look, I'm not going to apologise to the, to the other players. Eh, well, I think you should. Well, Mark, I've just told you I'm not going to do that. So, are you going to force me to do it? He's gone, no. I've gone, well, uh, well, it's not happening then. Uh, I don't think I should apologise. I'm trying to raise standards. I want the team to be better. I'm, I've come here to win leagues. I'm the only person here who would think of playing the Premier League today. There's no one else in this team, and there's no one, none of you could coach in the Prem, otherwise, you'd be there. I've given up playing in the Prem to come and help Rangers get back to the top. And all I've seen is, and that's it then, I've opened up subpar standards. Boom, and I said to him, look, Mark, with the greatest respect to you. I've been doing this since I've been consciously aware. You went off in, in, in your teenage years and your senior years, your 20s and your 30s to work in the banking industry in, in London. And with the greatest respect to you, I've probably forgotten more about football than you're ever likely to know. Like, this is my vocation. This is what I do, professional football. So when I'm telling you to do stuff that I know works in the Premier League environment and you're turning around saying to me, we don't do that here, 
that doesn't fucking cut with me because I'm out there in the arena like sat Sunday I'm out there getting my ass handed to me in front of 60,000 at Celtic Park and then getting ridiculed by the whole fucking country and the reason that's happening is because you're training habits and the way you set your teams up are, are, are ineffective and inefficient so if you don't fucking like that tough shit but I can't leave because the deadline's passed I can't register for another club until uh, the 1st of January so I'm trapped here do I want to play for you? Absolutely not, because I don't think you know what you're doing. But I'm here. So what, how do you want this to play out? I've just joined Loch Lomond. So if you want, you can just fuck me off and I'll just play golf at Loch Lomond every day. But I've come here to be a success and we're now uh, in, incompatible. He says a few things back. I end, end up getting after him a bit more. And in his credit, Davey Weir fucking stepped up and tried to save Warps. Warps just put his hands in his head and just stuck his hands on the table because I gave it to him that tight and he had nowhere to go. And to be fair to Davey, and I'll always respect Davey off the back of it, Davey said to me, well, who the fuck have you played for? What fucking career have you had? Because Warbs was getting it tight for not having a career. Now, when you come for someone like me, you better fucking be Wikipedia. Because before I, atta before I attack you or have an argument with you, I usually download you. So I'll have gone online and I've looked on your Mars Facebook account. I'll have seen all your cousins. I come armed. To, you know, I never go to a fucking brawl unless I've got, um, you know, some, some solutions. Some solutions. So David, David pipes up. He says, who the fuck have you played for? What career have you had? I said, shut the fuck up, you. I said, you, you, you're a centre-half. I said, you didn't even come through the system. I said, you went out to America and collegiate football and then... Back door, and you didn't come get to England till you were 28. I said, and then if you remember where you turned up, Everton, I'm an Evertonian. You just played 5 4 what, 4 1. You never fucking moved off the 18 yard line in fucking four years at Everton. So don't talk about playing central midfield. Central midfielders, as you know, think we're the best players because we have to have 360 degree view of the football pitch. Where for me, goalkeepers are last pick in school, changed a bit in the modern era. Defenders are limited. Midfielders who actually can't, aren't good. Defenders and midfielders who aren't good enough to play midfield. So you go fucking right back or left back. You, you're right or left footed. If you're ugly and you head the ball and you don't mind the, the rough and tumble, centre half. Uh, if you're a shitbag, sweeper and you'd have a big area to go and do your scrapping. But centre mids have to do everything. Forwards then at the flash, flash arries, quick, score loads of goals, get all the money, get all the bids. Uh, wingers are. Uh, not good enough to score goals and play as forwards <laughs> and not brave enough to play centre mid and 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 um, a little bit more skillful than the full backs. So football for me is a dead simple game. It's the same as the school playgrounds. So me and Davey are having it. And as I say, we have a bit of a ding dong. He comes over the top. And as I say, I've got enormous respect for Davey. Um, but at that point, what's coming out your mouth and that's your manager and assistant manager, I know there's no way I can take back that stuff. And what I'm saying is quite personal to him. And I know... I can just feel, you know, when you see your bridge keeps getting burns in front of you. So I'm like, but there's no way I can continue. This relationship is now untenable. So I leave the training ground that day. Um, and I'm thinking, all right, me and the manager have had a full ding dong. He knows what I'm thinking. I fucking give it to him tight. By the way, they give it to me as well. You know, we've, we've had a war of words. But where I'm from, my culture, that's, that's, a, that's a cleaning, that's a cleansing, that's a, right, we move on now, we move past this, there's no grudges, right, men and men, we've had our words and we move forward. And I come out of that and he suspends me, all right, so he suspends me from the training ground, Warburton, for four days while there's a club investigation based on what I've said in this office. So Richard Goff and a few senior people in the club, John Gregg, for, so I just tell them what I've said, I've said, this is what I've said, I just thought, this is exactly what I've said. So you can see them going, and he's like half not wrong here so I've just owned up to it then I get a phone call on the Friday or Saturday to say and it's Warburton phones my agent and says listen you're not going to believe this in the midst of me suspending him from the club and this going on the Scottish FA have contacted us and we've had our allegations he's got a betting account and, and they need to investigate it so Warbs then in the midst of me being off with the suspension phones me on this so I'm thinking a fucking Rangers throw me under the bus here under the bus so as it turns out, we played Celtic, lost 5-1. Celtic, if you remember, played on the Wednesday or Tuesday night in the Camp Nou against Barcelona. And I knew Celtic was shit based on our traction with them. Even though they beat us, the game was quite close. The sending off massively changed it. And we were massively underprepared and it wasn't much in the game. They were better than us. No, they were ahead of us, but there wasn't loads in it. There wasn't certainly as much as what people felt. Then they were playing Barcelona. So I've gone to all my mates, listen, this Celtic team is bang average. They're not as good as what they are because 
once I've had a scrap with you or played against you, I'm very good at nullifying you the next time round because I go, all oh, right, that's what he's good at, right? Don't do that. Quite scheming in that way. And play the game and go, all right, Celtic are ahead of us, but it's not insurmountable. We'll get to them, but there's loads of work to be done anyway. I realise Monday, Tuesday with Warps, it's not happening. Then I get the phone call Friday, I think it was, that this betting thing. Unbeknown to me, me being me, I've told all my mates, I've said, Celtic are shite. They were playing Barcelona. I said, they'll get pumped. So you had the over two and a half, over three and a half, over four and a half, over five and a half goals on the Betfair Paddy Power markets. So I've said, lump, lump Celtic to get pumped by Barca. Anyway, I think Celtic beat, uh, Barca beat them 7-0 or 7-1 in the Camp Nou. And obviously I'd, I'd had a bet on Barca on all the over goals and told all my mates to. Bear in mind, this was Paddy Power, who I'd had a working relationship with Paddy Power for years where I'd been paid in betting account tokens and to, to you know to do stuff for them speaking for them you know I, me and Paddy Power was the Rainbow Laces campaign mm. me Stonewall and Paddy Power started that and obviously it's pe been picked up by the Premier League now so I've had these bets on Celtic Paddy Power and, and when I think back to it I sound like a bit of a conspiracy theorist there but before I signed for Rangers or after just after I'd signed for Rangers I played in the BMW at Wentworth PGA and I got sat on a table with Dermot Desmond and JP who I think were major Celtic men and they were feeling me out in terms of you know who's this cocky little cunt who fucking so I end up sitting with them and then I go to I go to Rangers I have this bet and I've had this betting account for say eight years and there's a whistleblower in Paddy Power who's Celtic fan and you know, I'm like, so for me, I'm like, fucking grass and bastard. <laughs> like, who doesn't have a footy coupon? It's not like we were fixing games, you know, we're having a footy coupon. Like, just seeing the lad there, Tanali, like, you know, I grew up in a betting shop, betting on horses and Rangers will beat Celtic or Man U will beat Liverpool or Everton will beat, you know. A coupon for me was what a Saturday afternoon's footy was about. Getting up, your granddad, he'd go to, you know, fly around the betting shop. Your granddad would come in with the mirror, mirror reader, and he'd have a couple of betting slips and he'd, he'd be writing his horses out and his footy coupon. And you'd add like your free aways or your, you know, that, that, the that pools for me, it but, was. The, and you're checking in on teletext, you like that. Do you ever remember the one used to have like a stamp and stamp? Or, uh, the pools, yeah, well, that's Liverpool, ball, Little Woods Pool. Missed yeah, the ball. Pack, yeah. well, what was the fucking. Spot the ball or something. Well, you used that was to have. more to raise money when they all spot the ball yeah. when you peeled it off. Yeah. So I grew up in all of that. But as I say, you know, pitching toss at school, you know, I weren't really into cards. I wasn't really a card player. I never like played cards on the coaches and all that. But game of head tennis for a fiver, game of table tennis for a fiver, game of FIFA for a f like I I I if I play anything with you, I have to compete. There has to be a bet on it. So I play golf for a fiver. I play at the same intensity I would in the playoff final. I swear, like I swear, like I'm, I'm trying to win as much as I would be trying to win a playoff final if I'm playing for a five or a ten in a, in, on, on, a, on a Saturday or a Sunday on a golf course, because I just love competing, and and it's not about the money. It's a more, it's more about the challenge of whatever the discipline is you're doing it in, whether it's snooker, pool, golf, tennis, fucking love all sports, but specifically football, and. I'd owned and had lots of interest in racehorses. And in the racehorse world, I could bet on my horses to win. I couldn't bet on my horses to lose. I could also bet on horses that I had information I had. My mates were jockeys and riding them or trainers I knew. But I couldn't back my horse to lose in the race, which is, makes sense. So you don't want... In football, we went from an era where we could bet on everything when I first started. When I first opened my Betfair, Paddy Power accounts, you could bet on anything. And then they went, right, you can't bet on matches in your league. Now you can't bet on matches in, if you're in the cup and, and that's even if you've been knocked out, then you can't bet on anything. So the, 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 the regulation was slowly ratcheted up over the course of my career. But I just kept having a coupon in the background. You know, I've got a five-team accumulator on a Saturday in France, Italy, Germany. What the fuck's that got to do with me? I'm playing in fucking England. And it, it'd been unchecked. And I knew all the lads in the dressing room, everyone was at it. So, and then everyone's getting sponsored by gambling things. We're all getting... Uh, Money off camp. They used to come to us every finger off and say, here's a thousand pound betting tokens if you open an account with us or there's five grand, you know. So it's like, it's not like we're taking performance and answering drugs or like you, they frown upon it, but they're not really going to ban us for having a footy coupon. Fucking lo and behold, you know, they, due to the, 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 you know, the, the draconian rule sets, they fucking, they, you know, Tanali's going to miss a year's footy here for what? For having a fucking coupon. What did you oh. get? 
I got 18 months. I got one match in Scotland. They banned me. The Scottish FA were great. And the Scottish FA, because I left Rangers after it, never, ever thought I was going to go back to Hamden and turn up for the, for the investigation. And I remember turning up with my lawyers and they were fucking delighted I'd turned up, mainly because I gave them the kudos to go, no, no, you, you, have, you have given me the charge and I'm not going to disrespect you by going, fuck Scotland, I'm never going back there. I turned up and went, you know, fair cop, I have had the betting account. I explained it to them and they gave me one match. I went to England and... You know, I'm Jesse James, aren't I, in the FA's eyes? Even though I'm a proud Englishman who wants England to do well, you know, the FA, for whatever reason, want me out the game. They want me out, say and die. If they could, they'd get rid of me because I say things that they don't necessarily like hearing. You know, so when they banned me for the gambling, I wrote an article with a good pal of mine, Alistair Campbell, and, and took a bit of advice off a few people who know who, who, who are creative. And I wrote, wrote um, an article which forced the FA to relinquish the, as they were banning me for 18 months, they had a 12 million pound a season sponsorship for the England team with Ladbrokes. So I'm like, you fucking joking. Like, how can you, how can you be so draconian in one hand and yet you're in bed with betting companies and you've got all, I'm like, it makes no sense. If gambling's no good for everybody and we're not allowed to bet, otherwise you're banning us for that long, we'll stop everybody. Stop the, the kiosk being at a football stadium, stop the advertisement and, you, like fair enough if I'm taking performance enhancing drugs you know I, I failed a Nandrolone or an anabolic steroid test I get listen get him out the game he's at it for having a fucking football coupon you know fuck's sake like what was it like retiring well I didn't really retire did I so I got banned for that 18 months so in the midst of what was it like so I got the, a year uh... in Scotland signed for Burnley went back to Burnley trained with Burnley November December played again for Burnley first game back I scored against Southampton um, was this after the ban? No, I didn't get. I got banned in Scotland for the game, but yeah. that only lands in Scotland. Oh, the so English you FA still, still investigating. Oh, right, right, I right. come back to England, play mm -hmm. as I'm playing. I have to face it in about the and it's going, it's getting uh, protracted, it's dragging on. Mm -hmm. In about the April, I've got to go down to the FA. I go down, do a full day there. I think that's my last game. The game before, as it was, the FA have put off the year and so I can manage to play on the Sunday against Man United. So I play against Man United. I think we lose 2-1. I should have took Anthony Marshall out. He broke on a corner. And I, and I thought I'll get to him. I could have whipped him up and took a yellow card. But I thought I'll catch him. And didn't realise how fast the fuck I was. He fucking accelerated away. So my last memory, my last regret is I should have fucking tripped him up. He ends up breaking, passes to Rooney and Rooney scores. We end up losing the game 2-0. And in the midst of that, the FA come back. I thought I was going to get six months. Three months, you know, if I had a footy coupon, they're like fivers and tenors. You know, it's nonsense. They knew it weren't, they weren't match fixing or fucking throwing games. They knew we weren't fucking spot betting or any of that. They knew it was a lad who had the footy coupon. Me 10,000 footy bets or whatever were mixed in with 10,000 tennis bets, Formula One, because I'm an avid sports fan. I, I'm a footballer with a disposable income. I finish work at half two. I'm coming in. I love me horse racing. I love me tennis. I love me golf. I love me sport. I'm single. I'm sitting on the couch and I go, I'm going to have a 50 quid on that horse. I fucking you talk to say. I'm going to have uh, 50 quid on Leeds to be Castleford in the rugby league tonight. Not for any other reason. And I just love, I'm watching sports anyway and I'd rather have a bit of vested interest on it. They had all my accounts. I give them every account they had. Pros, tallies, pros and cons. I think I'd lost about... Over me 12 year, 14 year cycle or whatever, I think I was down 15 grand. You know, I'd put say 400 grand's worth of bets on, I was 15 grand down. So I hadn't even, like, it's just a lad having a punt, mm -hmm. you know, casual better. Um, and they fucking absolutely threw the kitchen sink at me. Like, they gave me a, an 18 month ban and a 33. That was like a death blow for me. They knew what they were doing. On, re on appeal, it was reduced to nine because no banner. They never. They were outside the precedent. Since I've been a manager, they've they tried to get. They've you know with the Stendhal incident, they've they've helped the police in the investigations, which the FA should never be doing. Uh, they've hacked our computers when we were at Fleetwood. Tried to accuse us of being racist on a couple of occasions. So there's this uh, thing in the FA that wants me out the game, which is fine, and I may well be out the game. What they don't understand is I'm way more dangerous to them out the game than they am in it. 